kura year 10. In this video I'm going to revise what we learned in year 9 about linear patterns. We learned how to find the rule and then we learned how to use the rule to solve problems. So I'm going to start out using some matchstick patterns from the New Zealand Maths website. And what we're going to look at is how many matchsticks are used in each of those pictures. So in the first one you can see that we've got four matchsticks in here. Okay, So we can count them up, one, two, three, four. There they are. We're going to record what we're seeing in a table because it's going to help me figure out my rule. So the first pattern has got four matchsticks. Now let's look at the next one. Well you might think because it's got three squares you're just going to times four by three. But that doesn't happen because we don't need a whole extra um, eight matchsticks, right? We've just got this one extra and this one extra and this one and then these, these three here. So altogether we've got the original four and six more. So that gives me 10 matchsticks. Now what I want you to do here is to pause the video and just count up or work out a way to figure out the number of matchsticks in the next pattern. Okay, so with this one here, we've got the three squares that we had before. And then again, we've got these extra matchsticks. So we've got six extra each time. And if you see that extra each time, that's the key to figuring out that we've got a linear pattern. The fourth one, we might think by now, is going up in sixes. So we can figure out the next pattern, and it's going to have 22 matches. And if you don't believe me, you can pause the video and count them up. So that's all very good, but if I said to you how many matchsticks are in the 20th pattern because I want to build it, we need to have a way to figure that out without having to draw out all 20 patterns. So let's see what's going on. Well, I can see that when I've got four squares, it's going up in sixes. So let's just try something out and see what happens. If I've got four times six matchsticks, that would be 24. Now, that's not the right number of matchsticks. Let's see how far off I am if I take my three, my third pattern, and times that by six. Well, when I go three times six, I get 18. Let's look at what happens back here in the second pattern. 2 times 6 is also not giving me the right answer. That's giving me 12. So what have I done here? Well, I've looked at that 6, this constant difference between the number of matchsticks, and I've said, let's just try my 6 times table. So let's suppose that m is equal to 6n and see what we get. And you can see that each time I'm going to be 2 off. And in particular, I'm going to be two match six, too big, because I want to end up with four, but I get six. I want to end up with ten, but I get twelve. And I want to end up with sixteen, but I get eighteen. So what do I have to do? Well, I have to take away two match six. So let's try this. Six n take away two. So six times one minus two will give me four. 6 times 2 minus 2 will give me 16. 6 times 3 minus 2 will give me 22. Oh, we've done something wrong. That should be 10. 6 twos minus 2 is 10, not 16. This one is 16. This is what happens if you make videos at 10.30 on a Sunday night. Right, and here we go. This one's going to be 22. So we've done our first rule for a linear pattern this year. And what we look for is we look for that constant difference, and then we times it by the pattern number and we see what adjustment we have to make. But there's a really easy way to see that, and you'll notice, some of you will notice, if I taught you last year, that if we leave a gap in our table, we can think about it like this. Each time that I go up, I'm adding six matchsticks in my pictures. So if we think about what happens now if we go back the other way, if we go down from 22, We get to 16, we get to 10, and we get to 4. Now 4 is the first pattern, but if we just artificially take 6 off it, we're going to hit the number that we need to adjust. Okay, so 4 take away 6 will get me negative 2. So there's no such thing as the zeroth pattern. But later on when we learn how to draw the graph that fits with a linear rule, this negative 2 is going to end up being the y-intercept. 
Okay, so you might remember some of that from graphing last year. So we found our first rule, and the rule is that m is equal to 6m minus 2. Now there are two things I can do with that now. The first thing I can do is to say, well, what is the 20th, what does the 20th pattern look like? How many matchsticks has it got? So all I need to do is say the 20th pattern has n equals 20, and then I substitute that into my rule. I don't have to build up 20 stupid patterns. So I get m is equal to 6 times 20, take away 2, which gives me 118 matches or matchsticks. So that's that one. But I could also work backwards. And I could say, well, if you told me I was using up 118 matchsticks, what pattern number would that be? Right? And so we can um, do that, but we might do it for one that's a little bit less straightforward. We might say, if we're using 136 matchsticks, what, what pattern number? So here, what we're doing is we're solving the equation to find the value of n. So we've got our rule. Our rule comes from the pattern, but this time we're saying m is equal to 136. So we have 136 is equal to 6n take away 2. And we think back to our year 9 equation solving. We add 2 to both sides, and we get 138 is equal to 6n. And then we divide both sides by 6, and that will give us 23. So the 23rd pattern has that number of matchsticks. Right, I'm just going to do one more slowly, and then um, that'll probably be, hopefully be enough, and then we're going to look at some without the pictures. So this is another one where we've got a very simple pattern. Um, it's squares again, it's even easier than the last one. So let's quickly get our table set up. We're going to do N here, and this time we'll call it S for sticks. Leave a gap to help us find the adjustment number. The first pattern, the second pattern, and the third pattern are all I've got here. In the first pattern, there are four sticks. In the second pattern, I've got these again. But then I've got to add on this one, this one, and this one. So I'm adding on three match sticks. Second pattern has got seven sticks. Third pattern, again, adds on three. So that's what's telling me that it's a linear pattern. This difference is the same every time. So if I asked you what the fourth pattern looked like, you could tell me, without even drawing it now, that it's going to have 13 matchsticks. So what will my rule be? Well, the first part of the rule that I'm going to try is a rule that says I'm going up in threes, so let's try our three times table. So S is equal to 3N. What does that give me? Three ones are three, three twos are six, three threes are nine, three fours are twelve. I've got three, but I want to have four. I've got six, but I want to have seven. So what do I have to do? Well, I've got to add on one. The other way that you can see that, if you like using the working backwards idea, is we can start with 13. We can see that we're going down three, down three, down three. And if I go down three more, I end up here with one. So what I have to do is to take my number, times it by three, and then in this case I have to add on one. Okay, so that's how we find the rule for that one. If I said to you, find me the... 30th pattern, how many sticks? I would take n equals 30 and I would substitute it into this rule. And I would get s is equal to 3 times 30 plus 1. If I said to you, how many um, patterns does it take to be using up 113 sticks? Then s is equal to 113. I'm going to go like this, 113 is equal to 3n plus 1. Hmm, I don't know if that one's going to work. It's not going to work because I've done my maths wrong. Let me have another thing. Let's make it... Does that work or not? Let's make it 100 sticks. Which pattern has 100 sticks? Well, this is just a big mess. I hope no one important out there is watching. More important than you guys. Jokes. S equals 100, right. So S is 100. We're trying to solve this equation. 
100 equals 3n plus 1. I take 1 off both sides, I get 99 equals 3n. That's better. n equals 33. Okay, so the 33rd pattern is going to have 100 matchsticks. So there you go. That's how we go from using a picture to going to a table to getting the rule. Later on, what we're going to look at is what happens when we've got patterns that go um, from uh, big numbers to little numbers. Right? So we might have something like this, 10, 8, 6, 4, and so on. Well, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Okay, so we'd put our N in here, and we might have S here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 8, 6, 4. So this should be starting to feel easy. Now we're going down in twos each time, so the rule will be S equals negative 2N, but I need to have my adjustment factor here. But look what's happening here. If I work backwards, I'm going up when I go back. So up 2 from 10 would get me to plus 12. And we can check that that rule is going to work. Let's try putting in n equals 7. My rule here says that it should give me negative 2 times 7 plus 12, which equals negative 14 plus 12, which is negative 2. So let's see if that's correct. Well, if I just keep on, I'm trying to find this one here, keep on going down in 2s, we've got 4, 2, 0, and negative 2. So yep, that works fine. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you go and do the Education Perfect task now, um, it should be pretty straightforward. And um, email me if you've got any questions about it.